Good evening and welcome to the Hometown News TV. I'm John Young. And I'm Lori Young. And in this week's Hometown News, we have Harvey McKay, Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. Tom Keen, The Good Old Days. This week his article is on Scandinavian foods. Dave says, shares a guideline ratio for mortgage and a person asking Dave about having gold or silver if that's part of an investment. John's Small Town DIY article this week is, Do I Really Need a Website? Up next, we have our obituaries. Edith Cutter, age 99 of Gray Eagle, died Thursday, December 28th. Services were held Wednesday, January 3rd at the United Methodist Church in Gray Eagle. Henry Hank Kastriba, age 83 of Opal, died Sunday, December 31st. Services will be held Saturday, January 6th at 12 noon at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Church in Opal. Leo A. Meyer, age 92 of Melrose, died Friday, December 29th. Services will be held at 11 a.m. Saturday, January 6th at St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Meyer Grove. Arthur J. Hinnenkamp, age 89, originally from Melrose, died Monday, January 1st. Services will be held at 11 a.m. on Saturday, January 6th at St. Luke's Catholic Church in Clearwater. Jerry Doc Lawmeyer, age 56 of Long Prairie, died Friday, December 29th. Services were held Tuesday, January 2nd at the Roy Hetland Funeral Home in Osakis. Adeline K. Christian, age 91 of Albany, died Saturday, December 30th. Services were held Wednesday, January 3rd at the Seven Dollars Catholic Church in Albany. Curtis L. Duncan, age 53 of Uppsala, died Thursday, December 28th. A private family gathering will be held at a later date. For the full obituaries, check out this week's Hometown News. We received a couple obituaries today actually that are not in the paper but we'll get them up on our Facebook page. We have Leander Notch age 82 of Avon who died today. Services will be held Monday January 8th at St. Benedict's Catholic Church in Avon. Helen Veter, age 69 of Atwater formerly Sock Center had died Saturday December 23rd. Services will be held Friday January 12th at 11 a.m. at the Pat and Shide Funeral Home in Sock Center. So check out our Facebook page for more details. Our New Year's baby boy is Noah Arnold Vandergon, who was born Monday, January 1st, to Trent and Elizabeth Vandergon of Holdingford. Our photos this week, our front page photo is Gavin Blanker, age four of Gray Eagle, who caught this nice 40 and a half inch Northern Pike on Lake of the Woods. It was submitted by Diane Rohde. Our Minnesota Through the Lens photo is a double sun picture taken by Karina Haberl, age 9, from Bergenger, Germany, who is visiting her grandparents, Jim and Carolyn Sinclair. Tad County American Dairy Association held a very dairy Merry Holidays promotion in Todd County grocery stores. Dave Wegleitner of Gray Eagle was one of the big winners who registered at Chris's Country Store. Jackson Blanker, age 6 of Gray Eagle, cut this 38 and a half inch northern pike on Lake of the Woods. Carter Blanker, age 8 of Gray Eagle, cut this 40 and a half inch northern pike on Lake of the Woods. Submitted by Diane Rohde. So I think the big question we have right now, is it quite cold enough for you? Oh, it was kind of bitter on route today. It was. that It was super, super cold over the weekend and early in the week. And then today it was actually above zero, but it seemed like it was damp and... Just kind of cut through your skin a little bit more and right to your bones. Yeah, it did, it did. But on a positive side, there's reports that it's possibly going to be, we're going to have warm and cool and warm and cool, but it seems like the temperature is actually going to be creeping up through the month of January. Again, it depends who you're talking to and where you're looking. But there were some reports that by the mid to end of January, we might be seeing 20s and 30s as a common number for our highs during the day. It's like, did we have our January weather in the end of December and now December and January? And what does that mean for February? I'm so confused. Well, I like your weather report better than the one that I saw when I was pulling the temperatures off for the paper yesterday because AccuWeather was actually showing that we're supposed to have negative numbers all the way through the end of February. We're supposed to have some days that it actually gets, you know, in the single digits, maybe some teens, but really, 
maybe a 30 degree day here and there, but really the 30 degree a couple days in a row isn't going to happen until March from what I was seeing last night. So I'm really hoping your forecast is right. Yes, I've been right so many times this fall that I'm sure we'll be right once again. Probably not. But I hear Sunday is supposed to be kind of nice, so hopefully that'll give us a little bit of a break. Yes, and go out and maybe get a couple of things done, like scraping some of that gunk off the car. Oh my goodness, the cars look terrible right now at this time of the year. The slop is there and you just can't do anything with it. So this past week we, we attended a funeral in the area here and it kind of gets a person to be thinking that we're losing a lot of the people who were experienced the change from a time of no electric, no phones, no this, that, or the other thing in our area those are the people who experienced the way life was when you know they were talking the early days that the train going through town was such a huge thing all these things that were in the past of our communities that just are, are unfortunately going to be forgotten as as the generations go forward because our kids have probably have no idea that there was a pickle factory in gray eagle or there was a train that went through town it was kind of neat when uh, the kids actually knew some of the people that were on the train because they were talking about how the gentleman was always in the, in the back because the, the kids, the train was a magnet for the kids. And so when they would pull away, the kids would wave and he would wave back and they knew his name and um, just kind of a neat uh, community. Yeah, I think definitely there was much more of a sense of community back then because you couldn't go outside. You had to find things within your community and they came many times via train. So it's just kind of one of those those things that, that we've had such in, in the last hundred years. There have been such incredible changes in our area, in the world, of course. And a lot of those people who experience those changes, of course, are getting to the point now where they may not remember or they're passing on and that leaves... Uh, a whole new world and, and a whole new situation where people will be just not making the connection of why the Lake Wobegon Trail exists. I mean, there have been people who I've talked to where it's like, oh, it was neat that they built a bike trail and, and built up those the shoulders and such so much. No, it wasn't a bike trail. It was a railroad bed at one time. Mm -hmm. And now it's a bike trail just repurposing the area. But the younger kids coming up, will probably, in time, just kind of forget that those things ever really existed in the area. That was strictly re recreational use. Even with phones, you know, today with the cell phones, kids just, you know, they have it at their fingertips. When I was a kid growing up and you're trying to explain to the kids that when you lived in town, you had these party lines that everyone in the block around you shared the line. So if you wanted to call a friend, you'd pick up the phone and your neighbor was on. and and you had to wait patiently until they were finally done using the phone before you could use it. A lot of times you could walk across or go to your friend's house before you could uh, actually get a chance to use the phone. And the funeral that we went to, they actually talked about the switchboard. Yeah, going back even more in time. Exactly, you know, how they had to go to the switchboard and you actually connected the phone calls from the switchboard. and. Yeah, the idea that there was a phone company in Gray Eagle at one time. It, and of course, we've heard people talk about movie theaters and multiple car dealerships and, and different gas stations and different things that have been in town over the years, multiple grocery stores. A cigar shop was in town, different repair shops. I mean, there's been a lot of different things in town. And I, I guess I really didn't even, didn't even know that there was a a phone company in Gray Eagle at one time. So it was, it was an interesting kind of walk through memory lane for some parts of it and walk through some of the history of our area and others. So, you know, things are kind of not gonna be around anymore. It is kind of neat with some of the uses of some of the older buildings. You know, years ago when they were talking about that they went roller skating and such at that, uh, the city hall, the old city hall that used to be kind of a, not it really was multi-purpose yeah, gym. Yeah, it was kind of like a gym and community center. Yeah, I mean, center you talk to Herb Johnson, um, who was one of the former teachers in Gray Eagle, and he tells uh, a playing basketball in that gymnasium, mm -hmm. and that basically that um, the, the people were right on top of the floor, and there was no room, but that's what they were using. They would come across from the school and play and head on back to the school. So just an interesting time in our history of our community and, and the different communities. I mean, every, every community had their little stories like this around the area of how they made things work at that time. Well, and it made for a nice, like like the couple was, that was a spot where they would go on a date. And, yeah. and nowadays it's like, you know, unless you're in a bigger community, you know, there's nowhere to go really, unless you're gonna go out to eat, but yeah. Gregel used to have a theater and they could go roller skating and just 
Yeah, now the now the kids if they can't if, on a date if they can't go to the movie theater they can't go to you know travel twenty miles. Well, what's there to do? Back in the day when they couldn't travel more than more than they could walk, they still found ways to entertain themselves and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for this week's show. We'd like to thank you for watching. And once again, if you get a chance, please share these weekly little news video segments that we're doing. I'd really appreciate any feedback you might have on that. If you would, just put those down in the comment section right down below. And there's also kind of a thumbs up like somewhere down there. If you could give us one of those with that, that would certainly be appreciated because we're doing these to kind of help you guys to you know catch up on some of the weekly happenings in and around our community. I would like to remind you to check out this week's Hometown News for all the great articles, different happenings in the area, and also check out our advertisers. Without them, we would not be here. I'm Lori from the HometownNewsTV.com. And I'm John from the HometownNewsTV. Thank you for watching. Good night. Good night.